What's going on guys? I'm Yeshaya, this is Fireface Films, and today we're talking about Fujifilm's big problem. But before we do that, make sure you drop a like, get subscribed, and click the bell to get notified. On with the show! So, if you've been up on your filmmaking news, you know that Fujifilm's been making big strides in the pro video space. And they've been making some really good efforts. There's been their amazing cinema glass, the X-H2S, which we're shooting on today, and the now groundbreaking GFX 102. Although there's one just glaring omission that is, is very puzzling, and that is the lack of proper color management support. So you might ask, what is color management? Well, I'm gonna give you a simple explanation. So essentially, it is the transformation from camera color space to working color space to display color space. So in a more practical sense, that's gonna be something like Sony S-Log to DaVinci Wide Gamut or Aces if you're into that type of thing. And then your display color space, which is Rec. 7, Rec. 709, Gamma 24 for a lot of people, or if you're grading for the theater, P3 DCC5, or if you're doing HDR work, Rec. 2020. Now, if you wanna know more about color management, cause that's a very simple explanation, check out Cullen Kelly, or Darren Mostyn. They're both very amazing colorists and color scientists who can shed a lot more light on this type of situation. So back to the main problem at hand. A number of pro and non-pro cameras are supported in both color management frameworks, but not Fujifilm? This kind of doesn't make sense. And you might ask, you might say, Yeshaya, Resolve has an input color space transform for F-Log. And yes, it does, but it does not support F-Log2, which is what's becoming the standard on this new crop of Fujifilm cameras. And even then, I find that the input color space transform for F-Log, it does, it's not a very good representation of what I shot on the day. And that is the whole point of color management and by extension LUTs, which we're gonna talk about now. So to contrast that, if you're using the manufacturer LUT, so for example, the F-Log2 to 709 LUT, that is fine for simple grading applications. But if you're working color managed, you're not going to be able to use manufacturer LUTs anymore because the color space transform is what's handling that transition from log to 709. And it's more frustrating because most manufacturer LUTs are only designed to go from camera space to Rec. 709. But if you're working color managed, you have more options to afford your output color space. Whereas if your camera, like Fujifilm and F-Log2, is not supported, then you're gonna have a worse time trying to get an accurate representation of your footage, especially if you're looking to do anything other than Rec. 709, as there are very few, if any, that I can think of basic camera manufacturers that do transform LUTs to anything other than Rec. 709. So, essentially, in the case of F-Log, one of the biggest issues you're gonna run into in color management workflows is that you're gonna have to audition all the various input color space transforms that there are to see which one is a mostly accurate representation of your footage, but it's still not gonna be one-to-one, -one, which is gonna cause problems for you, the colorist, or you, the DP, or you, the director, when it's not exactly what you intended to craft on set. And for example, in my own workflows, after auditioning quite a few input color space transforms, I've found that Arilog C3 as a transform works mostly pretty well. So, slight interruption. Um, I just said, that Arilog C3 is the best substitute input color space for F-Log2, but after further research, I now see that is probably not the case. And I say probably because, honestly, frankly, how can you know what the right answer is if you don't have a correct input color space to reference against that isn't a manufacturer 709 LED? So, as of this video, I am saying that Aces CC is a good substitute input color space transform for F-Log2 footage. Now, in the future, that might be disproven. We'll see. And if I do, more like when I make the video with the right answer, you can find that right here. But until that day, I am confidently saying that Aces CC is the best substitute option for F-Log2. 
back to the rest of the video. Although I know it's not the one-to-one -one transformation that I'm looking for. And that's the whole point. That's the whole issue is that without proper color management support, we're not going to have images that are what we're looking for, what we intended to craft. There's nothing worse than crafting all these images, everything for your film, and then to have it all fall apart at the post grading stage because it's not supported in your system. I mean, come on, the new iPhone 15, this phone right here is supported in Resolve Color Management and it just came out. But F-Log 2 has been around for at least about a year and a half now and it's not supported. And even Leica L-Log is supported. How many professional productions do you know are shooting like an L-Log. That's right, probably one or two ever, but not F-Log 2 from these professional cameras. So that's definitely something that needs to get fixed. So how can Fujifilm fix this? Well, it's pretty simple. What they need to do is get on the horn with both Aces and Blackmagic Design and get support as a, for an input color space transform for F-Log 2 immediately stat because there are a lot more people that are picking up these cameras and using them to shoot for their productions. I mean, they're putting in a lot of effort to make these cameras like legitimate options to shoot with because we all know for a while Fujifilm was not something you'd actually seriously pick up and shoot with, but now it is a genuine option. It's a real option. So this is something they need to get on immediately. And once they do, well, I mean, even with the results we're getting now using Arilog as a transform, Fujifilm's a formidable, like, competitor in the space of all these cameras, especially with the X-H2S, and we'll see what happens with the GFX2 102 once it gets in the hands of more people, because these cameras and their capabilities are amazing. I mean, you do not have 14-bit readouts in any consumer camera, which is kind of insane. Well, I say consumer, but you're not going to get 14-bit readouts until you get into the five, $6,000 range. So this is something that Fujifilm needs to get on to maximize the potential of these cameras. <laughs> well, that was certainly a mouthful, and uh, that's going to do it for us today. So if you enjoyed today's video, if you have any insights, please drop them in the comments below, especially for color space transforms, because I am searching for answers. So if you know anything, if you have any suggestions, drop them below in the comment section. I'm so open to suggestion, and any anybody needs to know how to work these cameras. But like I said before, that's going to do it for us today. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you drop a like, get subscribed, and click that bell to get notified when we post. And we'll see you in the next video when we give you a second to last update about the painting. And if you somehow don't know what that is, you can click right here to check out some videos about that. The painting is our crown jewel of filmmaking so far, and we were so proud of it. And we have some stuff to tell you about it a second to last time. So we'll see you guys in the next video, and take care. Hey!